Twitter, of course, is what's happening in the world. And it's about basically what people are talking about constantly, um, every place um, in every country um, that, that we operate in. It's the best place really to have a window into like developments and conversations around the world. And we have continued to see um, incredible growth, especially over the past year and a half um, on the platform. Uh, this number is actually from Q4. So um, just before, uh, you know, in 2020, uh, a couple of months ago, we saw a, a global average uh, monetizable daily active user growth up, um, to 192 million. So we're seeing um, year on year growth and um, seeing more and more people coming to participate in the public conversation on Twitter. Um, as you can see, yep, uh, the, the growth, it was 27% and now it was 28% internationally, uh, which I think is quite phenomenal. Um, most people don't know this, but almost 80% of our Twitter users are actually outside the United States. And we're seeing really strong um, uptake in our international markets, especially here in Australia. Um, I think Twitter is very unique because it's a public um, platform by default. And so it's a place where anyone can come together and have their voice heard and, and join with communities. Um, around the world. As we've continued to see a lot of these um, 20 consecutive quarters of audience growth, we're also really starting to see huge volumes of tweets come through. And so this is a real illustration of kind of that momentum that we've seen ebb and flow, but you've seen this really strong um, growth, especially since 2019, all the way through 2020. And we're continuing to see um, really strong growth, especially in Australia. Um, as people are more and more interested in current events um, and really uh, coming to the public conversation, but also um, a lot of our ongoing product improvements are starting to see um, really strong engagement. So a lot of people are actually under the age of 34 um, on Twitter in Australia. We wanted to provide you kind of a quick snapshot of some of the most recent stats that we've pulled from the end of last year around um, this specific Australian audience. So a lot of people are millennials and younger. Um, we're also starting to see a really big resurgence with a, a Gen Z. Um, I don't know if anyone here is into K-pop, but if you just jump on any of the K-pop hashtags, um, you'll definitely see that audience um, really galvanizing and pulling together on Twitter. Right now in Australia, we have um, you know, a bit more of a skew towards uh, male users and um, something that we're doing to um, really look at engagement with um, our female base, um, a, a lot of groups, of course, um, that work across a lot of different communities and seeing ways to continue to really um, draw in a lot more of these amazing female voices um, that we've had on platform. So if we move to the next slide, um, I think we will, I will be handing off to Paul here in just a second. I think if Paul can come on, um, he'll be able to give you a bit of an intro about Twitter, but for news and for journalists. Thanks, Cara. Um, appreciate it. And it's a real privilege to um, be able to um, speak to you guys. Um, so as the slide uh, asks or uh, suggests, uh, Twitter is really what's uh, happening right now. So the next uh, slide I'm going to play is for, for sports fans. So stick Kamara throwing his body in. It's going to fall for Ibrahimovic. Oh, come on! Come on! So uh, leaving aside the rather excitable commentator, um, you know, what's what's happening here? Well, this is a heat map and it's basically showed the moment that uh, he scored it basically Twitter basically lit up, as you can see here. Um, so for me, this really sort of captures uh, the essence of our platform, the right here, the right now. Um, we're all the sort of focal point for conversations when something is um, at its most relevant. So if you can move on to the next slide, please. So to reinforce, to, to come a bit closer to, to Australia and reinforce this symbiotic relationship, I think, between breaking news and our platform, here's a list of the most surfaced uh, hashtags in Australia um, last year. So obviously COVID-19 um, come, will come as no surprise to anyone, um, but you've also got obviously more domestic uh, focused uh, issues, the bushfires, devastating bushfires of last year, and obviously Australian politics, 
but there's also a lot of uh, interest in Australia around trending global movements like uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Uh, the next slide, please. So I really wanted to share some um, brand new product insights with you that really speak to um, our own mission uh, to help you improve the quality of uh, these conversations on Twitter and enable you to have new ways to engage uh, with users. So starting off with uh, a new product we recently launched called Conversation Settings. So this essentially lets people uh, um, choose who can reply to their tweets and join that discussion. So authors uh, of the tweets can have more say over um, you know, who can comment and keep the conversation relevant and essentially avoid harmful replies. So we're starting to roll this out eventually for promoted tweets as well. Uh, next slide, please. So whoever you want to comment, and it ranges from the default setting of everyone to people you follow or people that you invite via tagging, will label the tweet for transparency. So just to reiterate, everybody, everybody can actually view the, the tweet thread. They just can't all comment. Um, next slide, please. So in terms of news outlets uh, and journalists, you know, they've been, we've been finding that they've been pretty quick to adopt this new feature. So using sort of conversa uh, conversation settings, for example, to con conduct one-on-one -on -one interviews, have conversations as a reporting team and host panels. So for example, in this uh, slide here, um, Reuters have applied conversation settings to their Ask Reuters series. So turning to Twitter to cover topics, including COVID-19 vaccination rollouts and, and, uh, and big uh, ticket issues like racial equality. So conversation settings have really enabled them to bring together you know, a, a diverse range of journalists from their newsroom, as well as expert contributors to have a conversation really free from uh, potential abuse and keep it focused. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next slide shows a, a, another example from Axios, where in the US where they invited guests to join their markets editor in a discussion about the racial wealth gap. Um, so by employing conversation settings, they were able to have that focused discussion, mixing text and even video replies, as you can see on the, uh, the right hand um, example. Uh, next slide, please. So um, until now, um, being heard on Twitter has meant sharing your thoughts in 280 written characters or stepping out in front of a video camera. So with Twitter Voice, a new product, you can actually connect your audience uh, using, well, your voice. So if you're a journalist, podcaster, musician, or just a great storyteller, um, tweeting your voice will enrich your conversations and uh, you know, really give you a new format to, to keep that audience informed. You know, it's, it's, it's often the case you'll know um, that, that sometimes you know, the color and nuance can't, you know, is not quite captured through text, especially if you're a reporter, for example, on the ground somewhere um, between live shots or, or whatever, and you're getting all this sort of color and, and, and background that you, you, re, you can really sort of share through Twitter voice. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of uh, using this, it's not actually too different from tweeting with text. So really to start, as, as, as I hope these, uh, these, the, the, this slide shows, um, you open your, your tweet composer and there's a new icon. It's a little, it's a little sound wave. Um, so you, you'll see the profile photo within the record button at the bottom and you tap this to record your voice. Each voice tweet uh, will actually capture up to 140 seconds of audio and nod to a previous uh, text character limit. Um, but if you have more to say, you know, you can keep talking because at each time you reach, uh, reach the sort of limit of that 140 seconds, a new voice tweet automatically starts. So you can actually put it into a thread. So uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to give you an advanced preview. Um, so if you click again, click again, and it will play this. So um, Spaces is a brand new product that we're testing in beta that we've actually launched. Um, you know, in 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 December uh, last year. So with spaces, you know, we're providing people with a new way to connect directly in, in terms of intimate conversation spaces using their voice again. Uh, we're still in early beta, but we're very excited about this capability and how it can potentially allow experts and journalists from around the world to talk about anything from sports, entertainment, politics, or just really sort of hang out to uh, you know, enjoy each other's company. So um, for now, spaces are public and uh, anyone can join as a listener. So if you create a space, your followers will see it currently in the fleets uh, uh, bar, which is just above your newsfeed. So you essentially have control over it. 
who can actually speak. So while you're setting up a space, you can select who can join with those speaking privileges. So it's similar to conversation settings, you can choose between everyone, people you follow are only people you invite to speak. So um, this in turn allows you to send, you know, um, invites by direct message. And uh, you can also change uh, the format of the discussion at any time while your space is open. So uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so how can you really, how can you use spaces as a journalist? Well, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of, um, you know, use cases. I mean, for me, if you're a journalist and you've just published an article and you really want to talk about how you've, the research that gone into your stories or maybe some material uh, crucially had to be left out of the final edit, um, you know, this is a, a perfect forum for that. And of course, you can lead this, the discussion about breaking news. You know, people, as I've said, are coming to Twitter uh, to know what's happening now. So they want to hear from you as the expert, the news gatherer, the journalist about why that news story is so important, why they should care. And of course, when you're sending one of these things out, you've got to let people know about it. So plan ahead, set up a Q&A with multiple contributors to talk about the, top, uh, the topic, hype it up beforehand, crucially, with those speakers and really uh, make sure your followers know about this live space well ahead of time. Um, if you go into the next slide, please. Sorry, and the, and the next one. Okay, so I'm going to um, take, take things up another level to Media Studio. And this is basically, for, for anybody that doesn't know, this is our content management dashboard that we give to publishers and creators uh, at no extra charge or no charge at all. It's essentially a one-stop shop for managing your Twitter handle. And I'll go into a little bit more detail with the uh, next slide. So the library is essentially the, uh, the, the, the main focal point, and that allows you to manage all media that you want to add to your tweets, uh, images, GIFs, and crucially video. You can also compose your tweets within this uh, interface and actually schedule tweets ahead of time as well. You can track, crucially track the, uh, the, 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 the metrics behind that tweet performance and even monetize uh, video um, as long as it's brand safe um, to your handle. Um, if you want to the next slide, please. Um, another function of Media Studio is producer, and this essentially allows you to stream professionally produced live broadcasts uh, you know, from here. So in addition to Twitter Live, which is either twitter.com or the app where you can essentially go live through um, your composer, this essentially allows you to um, connect uh, your camera and encoder and some professional setup to get an even better broadcast. And like the library section, you can manage multiple projects, or in this case, broadcasts uh, numerous times, get your performance around those broadcasts to see who's joined in terms of current views, and, and also monetize uh, these live streams as well. Always important to think about how you can bring extra revenue into, into newsrooms. Uh, next slide, please. So for anyone new to this, uh, you know, we've really simplified the process. And there's only really two setup tasks. So once the first two stages are, are, are on you, so creating that, that sort of live broadcast, sending that feed into an encoder, um, and, and really what the first task will ask you to do is to create a source. Uh, you know, and sources, as, as I'm sure you know, are how uh, we ingest uh, that, that sort of raw material, that raw video into Twitter. Uh, we then uh, enable you to create a broadcast, which uh, and then enables you to distribute or, or, or broadcast that, that video um, across through Twitter servers onto your handle. Um, if you go to the next slide, but it doesn't uh, sort of end there. This is my favorite uh, sort of function um, of all of them. Uh, so Live Cut was uh, something we introduced um, less than two years ago and it replaced Snappy TV. So when you're streaming live um, and you can actually open this function and it enables you to clip sound bites and then actually tweet them out in real time as you're going live. So you don't actually have to disrupt the stream. You can just, um, you know, imagine during a press conference or something, you can actually just take sound bites, important little, uh, you know, snippets that you uh, you think your users may be interested in, and tweet them out as that broadcast is going on. So the next slide is going to give you a quick demo um, of of essentially how this works. As you can see, this is a NASA rocket launch. Um, so watching the kind of you know crucial moment. An editor window opens below. You can just select your in and out points frame by frame. Once you're happy with the few seconds that you've caught, 
you, you can just sort of tweak it, uh, get it absolutely right, you know, frame by frame. And, uh, and then you can save that clip, it'll automatically go up uh, into the right hand window into your tweak composer, where you can put your description and, uh, you know, all, all, all the sort of wording that you want and, uh, and tweet out. So as you can see, uh, really, really sort of uh, simple process and you can do this multiple times during the course of uh, the, 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 the um, duration of the broadcast. So really, really uh, simple functionality. I know I've sort of uh, blitzed through this, but uh, again, we'll, we'll show you um, uh, where you can go for, app, for, for more detail to, uh, to use this, uh, this function and in indeed the whole of Media Studio if you haven't used it before. Um, so really to sort of round off uh, my part, I wanted to give you a few sort of uh, hacks or tips that you, you may find uh, useful as uh, journalists navigating your Twitter account. So the first one, if you go onto the next slide, it's just a really simple one. Someone in your newsroom shares a great piece of video. You want to tweet it out rather than retweet it. How do you do that? So if you're on a, 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 an iOS mobile device, you essentially press the video itself on the tweet that you've seen, hold it down, and uh, a little window will appear to tweet that video. So you press that again, and you'll see it just appears in your uh, tweet composer uh, with, with any wording that you want. You just press tweet. Hey, presto, it's uh, out on your handle. And the, uh, the next uh, tip is uh, lot, lot, so many people don't actually know this. You, there's two ways of viewing your newsfeed. You can view it in chronological order. So as uh, the, uh, the, the accounts that you follow are, are, are tweeting out, or you can um, actually receive tweets as they relate to your behavioral habits. So in order to actually do this, as you can see here, you click on the little, um, press on the little star icon at the top right hand side of the app press that and it'll open up another little window which will well it'll actually give you the option to toggle between these two um two views so pretty pretty simple um next slide please and uh, this is crucial you know obviously as journalists you know twitter's long been that kind of news gathering um source so of course there are numerous handles that you'll be following if if they relate to contributors within your sort of uh, sphere of influence or covering the same beat as you. And if you want to be notified whenever they're tweeting out something which is relevant to what you do, you'll see here there's a little bell icon or a little alarm icon. You press that and that will give you the option to either be notified when they tweet at all, but if you obviously don't want to be sort of notified every two minutes, if they're prolific Twitter users, you can actually select only when they go live or, or, or publish video. So it's a really, really useful resource to know when the people, the top people that you follow are, are active and, and really sort of putting out something that you should be um, you know, aware of. So just a few uh, hacks there. I know we've covered a lot of ground, but um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show you where to go for more detail on all of this, but I'll, I'll hand back to, to Cara now. Um, you know, if you do have any questions, uh, Talia has been absolutely amazing in kind of answering um, questions in the chat. But if you, again, uh, we know we couldn't get to everybody's questions. So please feel free to either, um, you know, always DMs are open, DM me um, on Twitter quite a bit, as you can imagine. Um, but we also have our uh, uh, partner inquiry um, email alias there. And so you can send through um, any questions um, that you have, especially technical questions about uh, some, of the, some of the products that we covered. And um, one of uh, the folks on our team will get back to you um, with answers. And so that email address is um, just right there. And I will say, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, when we first started, um, if you do have an actual press um, inquiry about um, you know something that we've discussed or you know um, interview requests or something like that, uh, please feel free to contact our comms team at press. So p r e s s press at twitter.com. Um, that is a 24/7 uh, monitored email address, so they would get back to you uh, very quickly. And I think Talia the legend that she is put it into the chat. Yes, awesome, amazing. So please feel free to use um, either of those email aliases if you do have any um, follow-up questions. And of course, as it, it wouldn't be Twitter without leaving you with a few more um, little uh, one-pagers and tips and tricks. Um, 
so we do have a lot of resources that are available um, on our website at media.twitter.com. And then of course you can follow Twitter News and Twitter Media on Twitter, um, which is sending out lots of updates. And especially as we do a lot of these different new beta tests and stuff, um, they'll be tweeting out um, updates as we go. So you'll hear it um, from the horse's mouth per se. And then we also do have a newsletter. Um, if you, I, I personally am a huge fan of newsletters. I subscribe to multiple newsletters. Um, and so this is something that I actually have subscribed to and get uh, the Twitter media newsletter in my inbox every uh, month or so. So it's um, just uh, able to subscribe there at media.twitter.com backslash subscribe. So that is all we've got for today. We are finishing right on time. I hope that you all enjoyed your little lunch break with us and having a chat and learning a little bit more about Twitter. Um, we appreciate the Walkleys again for hosting us and doing these amazing webinars that um, we have found just incredibly productive. And we can't wait until we can actually do this all with you in person again, um, hopefully um, you know, very soon. So fingers crossed. It's been lovely to see you all and I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you on Twitter. Thanks again.